welcome back to both of you praveen and vishnu and then uh, this is nada and then uh, we are going to conduct a special training for you on the fusions of supply chain management so it is very exhaustive and then it will be covering all the topics so you will become proficient by the time what happens you practice everything each and everything so once when you practice everything what happens you can very well become very proficient actually so i am going to share my screen now okay, let me share my screen and then please shoot questions as and when it comes in fine so it is now 3:42 so i will not stop for a coffee break at 442 no right it is now 340 340 uh, at 440 i will not stop for a coffee break in my as per my india time now right in about a, one hour time i'm going to stop so now uh, vishnu can you put your email id so that what happens i can share your documents also so please put your email id so that i will not share it to you <clears throat> it will gradually uh, go at a smaller it will not begin only at a, a, a smaller pace but later on what happens it will, will be picking up speed actually mm -hmm. so he has now put a speed and i will not take a copy of the email id and then i will not share the drive it will call you as a cmt right click and then i will not share no i'm going to share it go there so both of you are giving a viewer mode so you can view as well as download so two of you are giving given a mode fine so you can very well view and then download if you want to share and then how about it so both of you are having a view privilege now <laughs> okay so you can view as well as download actually so as and when time permits what happens you keep on downloading them actually <coughs> let us go let us now begin the session actually any doubts as and when you get it what happens immediately ask me don't what happens hesitate to ask me because you have to get the things clarified actually because you are not not going to go as a uh, end user actually you are going to implement the product and so you must be having clarity on each and every So let me open up. So I have one fusion inventory documentation under US SCM team. I am opening it up. So we are opening it up. So there, what happens? I am now going to go one document called ERP evolution. Fine, there are plenty of documents there. So we are going to begin our discussion on the ERP evolution. Fine, ERP evolution. Double click. So let me double click on the one box. Open. So I am opening it up. I am going to now go there. <clears throat> so good. So this is what. so how enterprise resource planning has evolved evolved we are going to see now so in early 1950s when the industrial revolution took place fine the the industrial revolution took place mainly in japan actually and then the production units were concentrating on improving the production and productivity fine how to improve the production how to increase the productivity productivity is nothing but rate of production basically so every manufacturing industry was concentrating only on these two factors there so afterwards what happens in 1970 the concept of elimination of waste came into picture actually how to what about eliminate the waste structure raw material is purchased but it is not used it is not used for manufacturing it is called a waste structure and then a machine is there but it is not used an ideal machine is also considered as a waste manpower is there but we are not able to use it now fine so this are all considered as a industrial waste structure so you have to what eliminate it or reduce it actually fine raw material should not wait at all as and when it is purchased what happens you have to manufacture it similarly machines every machine must be used If a machine is idle, that means what? You are not doing a proper business at all. The manpower is idle. Then also, what happens? You are not doing a proper business. So, at 1970, elimination of waste was concentrated upon, and then everybody started to concentrate. So, this is analyzed in just in time. So, just in time means what? It is a. I want some. I am not going to manufacture a monitor for which I need picture tube. So, I have to buy the picture tube in the market only when I am going to manufacture it. I should not buy and then keep it. What happens the beforehand? Right. Only when it is there. What happens the uh, when you go to manufacture it? At the time only buy. That is called just in time. The raw material has to arrive in just in time before the start of manufacturing. And then once when it is converted as a finished good, it should be shipped to the customers immediately. It should not be remaining on the finished good stores. So the JIT is a concept which came in. Mm -hmm. Right. That is the, that is the, that is the, it got evolved actually. So just uh, JIT has optimized the stocking at raw material finished goods yards. and then brought the industrial engineering concepts of time study and motion study how to improve what happens the time as well as the motion fine so these two concepts came into being so many other concepts like phi s six sigma tkm etc were also evolved which were aiming at a better jet engine fine there are so many concepts which came in in 1930 they were dominating the industry for a pretty long time actually till then optimization of the resources were concentrated on we are concentrating only on optimization so even if the jet also i am the owner of a company the maintenance department will now say that what happens we need uh, equipments for some maintenance or some repair refurbishment refurbishment and then what happens some other uh, thing has to be done maintenance equipments are not very good 
So the owner will not talk to the finance team. The finance will now say, sir, as of now, we don't have any money. So we have to go for some uh, finance and leasing solutions and all. So they will now approach the appropriate uh, one of the authority and then try to get money. So once the money is available, then they will now provide the solution for the maintenance team. Similarly, the projects. Similarly, the production planning and control. So each and every section, fine, every resource of a company will be talking only with the owner. So the owner is a decision maker for each and everything. And so his whole time is wasted in what? Uh, uh, managing his own internal resources. But it is not the job of owner. Let's say I am now going to manufacture hamam so. Right? If I am concentrating on my own resources, then what happens? I will not be able to come out at all. So if I am manufacturing hamam so, I have to see how Lux is performing. What is the fragrance of Lux? Why Lux is able to sell a lot of products basically? So I have to analyze my competitor's product and then identify what are the futures of the competitor's product and then improve my, what happens, the way of manufacturing it or manufacturing or sales or service or whatever it is. So I have to concentrate outside the circle. But unfortunately, what happens, the majority of the owner's time is concentrated only on the inside circle. And so what happens, the company doesn't flourish at all. So this was, uh, what happens, identified because JIT alone is not sufficient at all at this time. <clears throat> so they found that what happens, there is something which is missing. So then what happens, the owners, the company owners are unable to, what happens, the flourish. They were unable to go up on the business basically. So a shift in thinking has taken place in the 1980s. 80s only, the shift in thinking has taken place. So instead of optimizing, instead of optimizing every resources, why not we optimize the business process? Right. So this shift in thinking took place in 1980s. So this has resulted in the evolution of enterprise resource planning. Right. The enterprise resource planning is the one which has got evolved in 1980s. The first company to what I was, take advantage of this shift in thinking is what? It is SAP in West Germany. Systems, applications, and products in data processing. So SAP is the first ERP company which has what happens, they taken advantage of this shift in thinking actually. <clears throat> so they came with their ERP and then it was excellent. And then even now, SAP is the top product in the world actually. Even Oracle is also a best product, but Oracle is only second to SAP on. SAP is the best product. <clears throat> so this is the one. <clears throat> now, how to optimize the business process you're going to see? <clears throat> Go down. Your business process is uh, triggered by a demand. There will be a demand which will be triggering a business process. You will be taking an action on the business process. And then finally, the business process gets fulfilled. Actually. So we'll now have a look at the sa yeah, sample business process. I'm not going to have a look at sample business. So here, what happens? I'm now going to manufacture monitor. So to manufacture monitor, I need picture tubes to be purchased in the market. Actually. So this is BP1 actually. So once the person creates a purchase requisition, the person who is sitting in the manufacturing department will be getting a purchase requisition. Fine. So once when he creates a purchase requisition, what happens? It will be going for an approval because it is a spend. A spend needs to be authorized by somebody actually. So it will not go there. So once when his manager approves, the BP gets fulfilled actually. The BP1 is getting fulfilled. Yeah, every BP will be triggered by a demand. An action will be taken on the BP and then finally it gets fulfilled. Are you all understanding it? Can somebody say yes to me? <clears throat> yeah. Good. Fine. Okay. Now, once when the BP1 is complete, what happens? BP2 begins because now we have to make a purchase order for this. So a purchase order has to be made. So now the approved requisition will now go to the purchasing department. This BP1 is there in the manufacturing department. BP2 is in the purchasing department. It will now come in and hit now. So the, the purchase officer will now obtain the quotation from various suppliers because every company wants to what happens buy at a least price actually. They will now take a quotation and then he will now make a what happens a comparative quote. And then finally, what happens, one of them will be sent to the manager. So once when the, his manager approves, then what happens, the PO gets approved. Fine. So BP2 gets completed. Upon BP2 gets completed, BP3 will be triggered. Now. Fine. So it will be going to the supplier. So he has to supply the picture tubes. So either the supplier will know uh, what happens, the supply it because he may be a dealer and then he will be doing it or otherwise he will now buy from a bigger manufacturer and then do it. Now. Fine. He may even manufacture it or otherwise he will now buy and sell actually. So material will be supplied to the stores and then there is the fulfillment of it. BP3 gets fulfilled. So afterwards, what happens? The BP4 gets triggered. Now, <clears throat> now what happens? BP3 is in the supplier's facility. BP2 is the purchase officer's facility. BP1 is in the manufacturing facility. And then BP4 is basically quality control. So they will not inspect it. So metal is arrived. They will not perform an inspection. So it will not pass the quality assurance check. -in. So they will be segregating the material as what? QA accepted and then QA rejected. So based upon which, what happens? It will be done. So it is the inspection department. And then finally, what happens? It will not go to the finance department. 
BP5 is the finance department. So whatever has passed, what happens? The in charge of the inventory will not write that what happens, it can be paid. Okay, fine. It is not passed for payment actually. You will not write on the invoice itself. And then the invoice verification will not happen. Not fine for that. So once when he has written the invoice, that can be paid. So he will not verify the invoice actually when everything is okay or not. And examines quantity bill. How much? Let us say there are 50 monitors, um, 50 picture views have been supplied, out of which two has been rejected on the quality issues. So inventory in charge will now write 48 can be paid out of 50. Whereas supplier would have created an invoice for 50. So the invoice, the payables clerk will now make an examination of what, how much has been invoiced and then how much is accepted actually. Now out of 50, 48 is only accepted. So he will now, what happens, uh, uh, certify the invoice for the payment and then what happens, it will now go to the, what happens, the payment of invoice will come into the check. So once when the invoice clerk has now passed it, then what happens, uh, the, uh, the payment section will now receive it. And then they will not create either a check or what happens after even so there will be some audit verification also <clears throat> in some companies what happens people may even cheat actually so audit will now come and make a verification then finally what happens the check will be created otherwise the payment will be made by either <clears throat> yeah, upa or something else okay? other methods and then be sent. so for the procurement of a victory tube there are six business processes are involved right so here you tell me which bp the owner must be involved no? The owner has to be involved in which BP? Anybody? Can you make me guess? No? The owner has to be involved in which BP? <clears throat> Out of six BPs. Just make a guess. Oh. Huh? Five. Five. Five is wrong. Whatever you say is wrong. Because owner... Yeah, he's not, not, uh, he need not be involved, right? Yeah, exactly. He should not be involved, actually. He, there is no what happens, activity of the owner at all. It, but many companies, what happens if they don't have an ERP system, he, the owner will be involved at every stage actually. So if you automate it, if you're going to wire this, fine, it's called a nested workflow. If it is wired, naturally what happens, he has got no role to play at all. He has to simply do other activity. Like what happens, I am now manufacturing hammam soap. I will now see my competitor's performance. I will now see their price. I will now see their quality. I will now see the marketing efforts, fine. I will not see the service, etc., etc., and then improve mine. So based upon the observations on the market, what happens? I will not take decisions on my company. Whereas this is an internal activity in which the owner should not be involved. This is a problem in many companies. Right? So everybody started to optimize the internal resources and then do it now. Right? But that is not the owner's job at all. He has to optimize. Once when you do this automatically, then he can be relieved and then he can now start to concentrate outside the circle actually. So that is where the ERP comes into picture. So ERP is the one which is going to what happens is seamlessly integrate very many facilities. Here, what happens is the manufacturing department is involved. Here, the purchase offices department is involved. Here, the suppliers facility is involved. Then afterwards, the inspection is involved. Then afterwards, the inventory in charge will now certify it. Then finally, the payables will now make a payment. So, so many sections are involved. So it makes a seamless integration across very many facilities of your company. And so finally, what happens is you'll be able to what happens complete the business processes basically. So in our company, what happens, I was working for a long time before ERP and then after ERP. So every Friday we'll be having a, uh, what happens, a meeting, right? Production meeting will be happening. And then it will now start at around 3.30 and then invariably it will go up to 10 o'clock. So after the advent of ERP, what the system will do is BP1 is completed, but as BP2 has not got completed. So it is waiting for it. Now the secretary of the vice president will now take a report. BP1 completed, BP2 not completed for more than four days. Right? It was not, not completed within the four days time. It will now list down all the BPs busy. Whatever, any, how many purchase requisitions are there, which is not, the purchase order is not created. It will now give you a list immediately for more than four days. Now. <clears throat> so now what happens in the meeting, the agenda is ready. What year? Similarly, BP2 will be busy. Everything will be having a time span or otherwise a money span or something like that. So based upon which what happens, the report will be made. And then once when we all go and then sit on the production meeting, what happens, the vice president will be sitting there. So he will ask the purchase officer, hey, we are not created a purchase order for more than four days going. He told us, sir, the company policy is what? We should not give a, what happens, a purchase order in a single quote. I am waiting for another quote. I am waiting, waiting for the past four days. I have not got another quote at all. So the VP will now say, come on, go ahead, fine. He will now give a go ahead. So with a single quote, you go ahead. So the decision is made now. This agenda point is now decided actually. Similarly, what happens, there will be some 15, 20, or I mean, sometimes even 50 points. So the decisions for the, what happens, for the bottleneck activity, where some of the BPs are getting stuck, what happens, it will be done, <clears throat> right? So you have to manufacture it. 
the supplier will say, what happens? Sir? I, I have to manufacture it, sir. I am not having sufficient money. Okay. Provide him an advance. You will not say, fine. 50% advance, you give it to him so that what happens? He can manufacture it. So the decision is immediately made so that what happens? The manufacturing of the picture will now begin at the supplier's facility. So likewise, what happens? The decision becomes fast because we have a seamless integration across very many facilities of a company for which what happens? The owner is not required. The vice president of the respective manufacturing team or the marketing team or the sales team or the service team will now conduct a meeting and then they will not take quick decisions with it. So this ERP has now, what happens? Enhanced ERP, the evolution of ERP has enhanced your activities now, fine. So the business has become very more productive actually. Is it clear now? Any doubts on this? Good. Yes. So this is how the Oracle ERP is there. Oracle initially came with the on-premise ERP. It's called e-business. Now what happens is they are now going to cloud actually. They are now going to cloud. So cloud is the latest version which has now come in. <clears throat> right. So there is a cloud one. So this is the one. <clears throat> so we'll now go to what happens, how the ERP is now working on this. So you now understood it. So we have one more file called Fusion Applications over here. So you understood it. So it has got some more details, but uh, that will be, uh, you will be finding it difficult to go there. To go down, fine. we'll be having some of the stocking strategies and all. You'll be finding it difficult. So I'm not uh, touching those parts now. I know touching only the basics. Basically. So I'll now go to the Fusion Applications over here. This is the one. Don't take any notes. Just watch and ask me shoot questions. And then on the second time when you're watching it, you take notes. Because third time, you won't have time at all. In the free, you don't have any time. Second time, you take clear notes. Then that notes will be a Bible for you. And then you'll be able to work with that notes for every activity. So we go to the Fusion Applications over here. So go there, fine. <laughs> so maximum. So uh, there are so many ERP products, more than 50 ERP products are available here. So Oracle identified that JD AdWords, right, it is very good in manufacturing actually. And then PeopleSoft is very good in HRMS. And then Siebel is very good for CRM, customer relationship management. Oracle is very good for financials. So they found that these are all the uh, ERPs available in the market. So they purchased everything. So JD AdWords has been purchased by Oracle, PeopleSoft, Siebel, and then Oracle e Oracle eBusiness is their own native product, actually. So they purchased these products and then amalgamated the futures. So they have taken up the order management futures of JD Edwards and then put it on Fusion, actually. Similarly, PeopleSoft HCM has been put on Fusion. Siebel's CRM has been put on Fusion. So these, uh, what happens, uh, excellent futures of these modules have been taken and then what happens, it has been amalgamated into one product called Fusion Cloud, actually. So now Fusion Cloud is now very powerful. They are all their own product now. And then in the market, we have only one competitor who is SAP. Fine, SAP is the only competitor. And then we don't have anybody else at all in this place. <clears throat> right. So, go so Oracle, they are now Oracle products. JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, Siebel, EUS, IP, IP, and Primeware, everything they have purchased. is all one. If you go there, everything has been amalgamated into one product called Fusion Applications. So, it is a cloud company. So the biggest advantage of cloud computing is what? The failure rates are very less actually. 99.9999% availability, uptime, and then uh, what happens, accuracy, repeatability. There are so many factors are there of a cloud computing. So cloud computing is an ex excellent uh, method of what happens uh, doing the business actually. If you have an on-premise one and then if there is a problem, then what happens, the whole business will come to a standstill. You're not doing it. Whereas here, what happens, you'll be having a lot of backups and then uh, so many uh, fun fantastic functionalities are there. So everybody is now, launching the thing only on the cloud actually. So the practice of using network of remote servers hosted at the different places, fine, that is where the cloud comes into picture. <clears throat> so this is the, uh, what happens, uh, advantages of you know, fine productivity, and then what happens, uh, social media, marketing, everything is there. So many features are, e-commerce is also very much possible, fine, it can very easily, mobility is there. So there are some of the excellent features of a cloud computing. So every company will be having its own cloud. IBM is having a cloud, fine. And then uh, Oracle is having its cloud. Uh, your uh, Google is having its own cloud. So every big, big companies will be having their own. So really Oracle is also having its own cloud. Actually. So previously, what happens, we were having the on-premise installations, and then now cloud is now integrating everything, actually. And that is the biggest advantage in the cloud. Right? So now they are shifting gradually from on-premise to cloud. But even then, now what happens, on-premise is still there, right? because uh, so many customers are on on-premise, and so they have not stopped uh, EBS, basically. E-business suit is the on-premise. So it's still going on. So if a customer wants it, they are selling it. But your fresh sale will be only on the cloud, actually. 
in the how it's happening. So Oracle sells the product in three different forms. One as what? Software as a service. One is a platform as a service. One is a infrastructure as a service. So three different licenses are there. SaaS is the cheapest license. So they sell this license to the end client. And then upon seeing the futures, they will now gradually be shifted to go to pass. And then finally, if required, IS. But they may not be going for IS. Otherwise, the requirement is so, so elaborate. Otherwise, what happens is that they will now gradually move into pass. SaaS to pass movement is happening. But pass license is 10 times costly than the SaaS license. SaaS has got only minimal functionality. It is not having every functionality. SaaS is having minimal functionality. Whereas PaaS has got plenty of functionalities. So much of a functionality is available. But you have to pay 10 times the cost. Actually. That is the biggest problem. So they, what happens is they tempt the customer to, what happens is they come into Oracle and then uh, these guys uh, buy the cloud. And then afterwards, finally, what happens is they'll be forced to move to PaaS because their functionality is not met with an asset. <clears throat> so here, <clears throat> Cloud computing, the options for the customers are available. SaaS, you only have to consume whatever Oracle is giving. So we have applications, middleware, servers. You cannot touch anything at all. Fine, we cannot touch anything at all. Fine, nothing can be touched. Fine. So everything is with the Oracle only. So you only have to consume whatever Oracle is giving you. Whereas in a past, applications can be built. Oracle is having only middleware, middleware and servers now. My middleware and then OS and then servers are with Oracle. But application is in your hand actually. So you can customize the application to any extent, whatever way you want. You can build the application, actually. but it's very costly. 10 times costly than SaaS, actually. <laughs> Sometimes what happens, the product license will be around, let's say, one of the modules will be costing around 10 lakhs. They will now give a discount of around 90% for the first year. And then second year onwards, you pay the 10 lakhs, but first year, what happens, I give you a 90% discount. So on seeing the 90% discount, what happens, they will now go there. And then after enjoying the services, what happens is they'll be forced to pay the full money for the second and third year and all, so and so, so and so. <laughs> and this will be very costly actually. So if you want, what happens, you want to build the application, then what happens, I you open it up, but you pay the money. So this is another indirect way of what happens, pulling the customers and then trapping them basically. <laughs> so this is how to do it. Whereas the server, what happens, even the middleware and OS is also possible for the end client to what happens, modify them. Only servers are with Oracle. The rest are with you. Ah, yes, fine. Infrastructure as a service. But uh, nobody goes for this license, fine. But the reliance on this is one. So reliance on this may go at the maximum only for a pass. Fine. Like Tata Motors. They will now at the maximum go for a pass only, but not for IS. IS is the one which is very, very, what happens there? Too much of a modification is required, then only they will go for it. Is it clear? Anybody can say yes to me? <clears throat> SAS, pass, and IS. Yes. Okay, okay fine. Yeah. So now, what happens is that delivery models of fusion cloud applications. Right? It is about managed by the vendor, actually. In a SaaS, what happens, Oracle manages everything. Application security, database, operating, everything they are managing it. So you are only going to consume whatever Oracle is giving. You cannot do any changes at all. Whatever Oracle is given. Whereas in a past license, what happens is managed by you, applications, you can very well customize it. And then in IaaS, what happens, you can application security and database also you can customize it. So that's all that like so the what happens? So here, what happens? Is you manage on on premise. What happens? Is everything we manage. Nothing is with the Oracle actually. Fine. Everything is with us only. But unfortunately, what happens? The reliability, accuracy, precision. If the server goes down, what happens? We only have to take responsibility. Whereas in the case of a, a cloud, what happens? Oracle takes responsibility. Okay. So on the right hand side, you can see SaaS application fan where. Others are managing. We are not managing anything. The next one is the pass where application and data you can very well manage. Whereas in IS, you can manage so many things. <clears throat> I will tell you one example of a SaaS. Say, for example, uh, I am now going to buy a product in Bombay and then receive it in our Bombay warehouse. And then I am now going to ship it to Madras. Fine. And then uh, what happens? You ship it to Madras. And then uh, from Madras, what happens? Uh, the customer is in Thambaram. Thambaram is a suburb of Madras. And so what happens, you're going to ship. So in one sales orders, what happens, I have to buy it from a supplier, receive it in Bombay, and then move it to Madras. Because if I ask the supplier to supply directly to the customer at Thambaram, what happens, he'll be charging too much of money. Whereas we have internal fleet running from, uh, what happens, uh, Bombay to Madras every day. And so what happens, uh, the transportation cost is very cheap. So what the end client is saying is that, what happens, uh, you buy in Bombay, you receive in, what happens, uh, Bombay, and then afterwards, what happens, you transfer it to Madras, and then finally ship it to Thambaram. And that is not possible in a SaaS. In a SaaS, this is called multiple fulfillment model. 
by receive transfer and ship <laughs> what oracle says is what you buy and then ship <clears throat> you manufacture and then ship you transfer and ship but buy receive transfer and ship is not possible in the saas case so if you want to have that functionality then you go for a pass so customer end client will now see whether is it worth paying this much of a money for a, such a small application customization if it is so you will know if it is a real good requirement then what happens you will now upgrade this software from a saas to pass otherwise you will now pull along with the same things clear on this now fine so there are there are so many such situations in which what happens is you may have to customize the application whatever oracle is given may not be sufficient for your talk can you say yes to me <clears throat> is it okay vishnu yes yes yeah clear on right so mm -hmm. the, so initially what happens they will be given only a saas license they will be only they will not go directly for pass unless they know the or application they will not go for a pass they will not go only for a saas okay this is a, a, a not relevant for you because it's comparing with the previous technologies so i am not going through this now you don't have the no knowledge of the previous technology okay so i am closing now next is what you will now go on and have a look at the global enterprise structure now fine there is one thing called global enterprise structure so there is a document called global enterprise structure on the fusion inventory documentation fine i am opening it double click and i will so how the enterprise is now created actually fine this is how the enterprise structure will be there fine. so fusion global enterprise structure is there for this say for example oracle has now uh, sold something to reliance and then they have called the tcs to what happens implement the uh, uh, the saas application actually saas inventory saas procurement and then saas order management tcs has been given a responsibility to implement it actually. so the reliance industries has purchased from oracle a saas license for running them in an enterprise so they will have multiple legal entities fine reliance industries will be having multiple legal entities like reliance petro reliance petro will be registered in bombay and then what happens it will be reporting to the local maharashtra government fine and then what happens reliance info is now registered in delhi the registration office is in delhi and then they will be reporting to the local government of delhi actually so there will be so many things called legal entities so they are also known as a gre government reporting entity so one enterprise may have multiple lles and will be having multiple lles and then to run it very efficiently we will be having a logical entity called ledger ledger is a logical entity which will be what happens uh, uh, facilitating you to create the data on the legal entity le is the owner of a company actually. le is the owner and then here it is a group of companies actually enterprise is nothing but a group of companies so your petro is a company info is a company textile is a company fine like that what happens there will be so many companies are there every company is known as a le legal entity and then they will all report to the local government for all your taxation purposes your holidays and then what happens your compliance of other government uh, functionalities will really. be everything it will be taken care of by the le actually le will be a local reporting authority to every individual uh, on another state sector <clears throat> so one enterprise may have multiple le's actually these le's are basically guided by the logical entity called ledger ledger is not a physical one it's a logical one so they will now help you in creating your profit and loss as well as the balance sheet now <coughs> <laughs> so the le will now report to the local government now, for example the reliance petro will now report to the maharashtra government and then they will now see how much of sales has happened in the previous financial year how much of profit and loss they have made how much of taxes they are going to pay the tax paying is only uh, uh, national actually but what happens it is indirectly reporting to only the local government actually. so that profit and loss taxes and other things on the financial activity everything will be reported by the le so le is considered as a owner of a company whereas enterprise is nothing but a group of companies a group of le is known as a what the enterprise actually <clears throat> any doubts on the enterprise le and then ledger <clears throat> uh, no we are good good enough right so bina le will be having multiple business units right say for example reliance petro so reliance petrochemicals will be having a business unit in patal ganga it will be having a what happens a manufacturing unit in jamnagar so likewise what happens you will be having multiple bus built so bu is basically like what happens a 10 storied building 
where what happens, all your sales officers, all your purchasing officers, all the HR officers, fine, all the administrative team of a LE will be sitting there. LE is not a physical one. LE is basically what happens is the owner of the company. And then every LE will have multiple BUs. BU will now house everybody. BU is like a 10 story building. So all the activities will not take place. And all the activities will be there. So your sales activity, your purchasing activity, your HR activity, fine. And then your all other activity, fine. everything will be happening on the BU level. So we can even say the BU is the heart of a structure. Actually. Fine. So the Mumbai is centralized sales and purchases is one example actually. Now, I have a customer called Air India for your Reliance Petrol. Actually. So they will not ask for material. Fine. A demand will be coming from the Air India business. Fine. They are not putting a demand. So the demand will come to the business unit. And then once when the demand comes in, what I will say, the demand will be sent to the manufacturing unit directly for manufacturing. Sometimes what happens, you may not be able to what happens, manufacture it immediately. Now, right? You need some material. Actually. So the demand for manufacturing will be going over there. At the same time, the same demand will be sent to the suppliers. This is hydraulic ink now, right? the example. So it will also go there. So demand will be getting percolated to multiple places actually. It will not go to the suppliers as well as to the manufacturing unit. So the supply will not supply the raw material. Right? The supply will not begin. So the demand flows from the right to left actually. Right, right to left will not flow. And then once when the raw material is revealed, what happens? We will not make a what happens? A movement of material between raw material stores to manufacturing. Right? The supply will not go. The supply starts from the supplier actually. It will not go there. So he will not receive a demand from the business unit. He will not receive the material from the raw material. And then he will not manufacture it. And then finally the finished goods will be sent to your warehouse. And then from the warehouse, what happens? You are going to give it to the customers. So in a typical supply chain environment, they, the whole process of what suppliers at one end and then customers at other end is known as what supply chain actually, <coughs> not a supply chain, or we can also also end to end supply chain. <coughs> there will be uh, thousands of suppliers and thousands of customers are there. Right? All of them form part of this network actually. <laughs> this is also called as what end to end supply chain execution actually, where demand flows in one direction and then the supply flows in opposite direction. Actually. So if the demand is in excess of supply, the customers will shout it. Are are my demand is not met at all. If the supply is in excess of demand, tell me who will shout it. There will be one guy who will be shouting it. Who will shout it. Customers will not shout because the demands the are... The owner. Better. The owner. Very correct. Who is this? Mm -hmm. Praveen, na? This is the Praveen's voice, isn't it? I have to get accustomed to the voices, basically. <laughs> good. Fantastic. Oh, no, that's, that's Vishnu. That's Vishnu. Vishnu. Okay, fine. Very good. Vishnu. So Vishnu, you are beautiful now, fine. If the supply is in excess of demand, the owner will shout because his, his money is now lying as what? Monitors now, the warehouse. There is no takers at all. <laughs> you have taken mm -hmm. all the money and then manufactured it, but there is no, there is no, what happens, the takers actually. So what happens in, in a typical environment, what happens in a supply chain execution, we have to balance the demand supply is like, what happens is a uh, two knife edged swords, fine. The, the two, both the edges of the sword are, what happens, very sharp. And then you have to what I was the manage it in a very per perfect manner. So demand supply balancing this is called DS balancing. DS balancing is the biggest task in every company. And then if you try to manually do the map demand balancing, you may end up in error or in a problem. Basically. So Oracle has got six modules to plan. The planning modules will not take care of DS balancing. Basically, it's a very expensive one. And then uh, there are not much of a consultants available in planning it. Nobody. I also want to learn planning, but there are no what happens, good trainers available in the market to teach me. So I meant to learn the planning actually. So the DS balancing is done by the planning team. And then there are six modules to what happens, do the balancing. It's a very, very tough task. And they do it actually. <clears throat> Whereas when we come to your supply chain, pure supply chain, pure supply chain will now receive the material from the suppliers. It will now manufacture it. And then it will now stock it in the warehouse and then give it to the customers. So they are also known as called material distribution modules. Right? The inventory purchasing and order management are known as material distribution modules. Right? We receive it from one place and then we transfer it. We make it and then we again transfer it and then transfer it. So they are known as what? They are known as what? The inventory purchasing and order management are known as what? The material distribution modules actually. So in SCM, if you know all these three modules, you can very well work at the lower level actually. But DS balancing will not be done with the FCM, FCM modules. DS balancing will be done only with the planning modules. Planning module is a master module which will be sitting upon inventory purchasing and order management, and then it will now guide everything. Now, right? how, what to buy, when to buy, when to stock, when to manufacture. Everything it will now guide actually. 
So it will now keep a cool, cool, keen watch on the demand and supply. It will now, demand will be an actual demand plus forecasted demand. Right? There will be two days of demand. What is what? Today, what is the demand? And then tomorrow, what is the expected demand? There is a the forecast available. So with the help of a forecast, what happens? It will now expect it. And then it will now appropriately manufacture it. Only at the time, it will now manufacture it. So that what happens? Your marrows uh, will not be having any excess stock at all. Got it? Fine. So if you happen to learn what happens, planning, it will be great actually. Fine. But I'm sure we are struggling actually. No good trainers are available here. If I find any good trainers, I will be introducing him to you. Okay. When I get it. So in this training, we are going to see only inventory, purchasing, and order management actually. <clears throat> Clear on this now? Any doubts? So now you understood the inter interface, right? <clears throat> Any doubts, man? Can you see yes. it? Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. This is on the global interface structure. Now we'll now go there. We will now in the bottom, what happens? We have one more document called vision interface structure. So we are now working on a ready-made data actually. So Oracle instance has got a ready-made data. So the ready-made data is available here on the vision interface structure. So I have now opened up the vision enterprise structure. Right? So double click and then open it up. Right? Double click on it and then open that vision enterprise structure. So it is called fusion enterprise structure. So we have a legal entity ready-madely created as US1 legal entity. There are multiple things they have created, but this is one structure, structure. And then they have a ledger called US private ledger. They have one chart of accounts called US chart of accounts. And then we have a business unit called US1 business unit. And then we have one master inventory org and then we have plenty of child inventory orgs. They are all ready-madely created for us to practice it. So this is an enterprise structure. In purchasing, we'll be creating the enterprise whole unit. Yes. We'll now create everything. So below the business unit, we'll be having an inventory org. So we'll now see about what exactly is the master inventory org. Let us say in a company, I have got many workers and then we have one union leader. Right? So once when the union leader enter into the factory, he will not do any job at all. No, his boss also will not give any job. What is his job? He will now collect all the employees' data, like when he has joined, when he is going to retire, when his promotion is due, what is his health benefits, everything he will now have. So every individual employee's data, he will be having it. And then when there is a problem, he will be representing it to management actually <clears throat> to rectify. So a union leader will not perform any job at all. And nobody will be whatever the, also giving him a job also. Even though he is a worker, nobody will give. Similarly, a master inventory or is nothing but a repository of all item definitions. Items are going to be defined. Right? Whether I, I can buy the item, whether you can sell it, whether you can stock it, whether you can transact it. Right? There are so many attributes of an item. All the details of the items are stocked or stored in the master inventory or. And you will not perform any transactions in the master. So a master org is nothing but a repository of all item definitions. Actually. Got it now, fine. So it has got a code, it has got a name, and then it has got a location. Right, and then below which you'll be having multiple child dogs. Right? The child dogs are located in many ways. So Vision has got very many child dogs. Fine. I have given only 001 and 002 and 003. One is in Seattle, one is in Atlanta, one is in Chicago. Right? So these are the three child dogs. So all transactions will take place only on the child and then nothing will take place in the master. And every organization must have a distinct location actually. Right? For example, the Seattle organization, they are now created a location also called Seattle. For the Atlanta organization, they have created a location called Atlanta. So this is a physical address actually, the physical address. Similarly for the Chicago. So you should not associate the Atlanta to Chicago. That is not possible. That, is not, that should not be done. It will not work at all. So every organization must have a distinct location. <coughs> so this is how the enterprise structure is there from the supply chain perspective. Actually. <coughs> so Nana, can't we have like... Uh... Two locations in the same city, like uh... if you have two locations, what happens? Uh, we will come to that a bit later. Now, fine. We can even have two locations in the same city, fine. But uh -huh. <laughs> you cannot associate both the locations to the same org. Oh, okay. okay. Now, but yeah. Atlanta is there. No, fine. You can uh -huh. have Atlanta one and Atlanta two. Atlanta one can only be associated with the org, but Atlanta two cannot be associated. One location can be associated to only one org, but you can have a location which is not having any association to org also. That topic will be coming to the bit later. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically, all the distinct values will be the org. Yeah. So every org have will have a distinct org. location. Each and every org will have a distinct location. Okay. You okay. may have multiple locations. There are locations which are not tied to an org. They call them as a type organization location type. So some of the locations may not be tied to an org. Will be coming to it a bit later. Not. Yeah. 
So Atlanta 2 will not be tied to this org. Exactly. Atlanta 1 only will be tied to this org. Atlanta 2 will not be tied to the org. And then how we are going to work upon, we'll be seeing during purchasing. Actually. It's a very higher level concept. So there are locations which may not be tied to an inventory org. Got it? I think you are now on the, yes, yeah. on the groove now. Fine. <laughs> you are fitting it to the groove now. Fine. Now, what happens? This is the vision enterprise structure. So, it is a ready made structure available on every instance. Actually. So, what we are going to do is we will now, what happens? Every business unit will have only one master org and then it will have multiple child orgs. One master and then multiple child. So, but what happens? Uh, in, in For the training purposes, we can have any number of masters and then the combination. So let's say is a master one, child one, child two, child uh, what a master one, child one one, child one two, child one three. Now we are going to create master two, and then master two one two two three, master three three one three two three three. Like that, what happens? You can also create for training purposes because we are not going to push it for financials. So once when the transactions are completed, we will be pushing it to the financial entity for taking the profit and loss actually, and then the balance sheet. But since our purpose is not going to push to the final entity. We can have our own set of master org and child orgs. So let's say I am not going to create. I am not going to have what happens a prefix of A01. So in A01, I will be creating a master org and then the locations also. And then what happens? Uh, Vishnu will now go for B01. And then Praveen will now go for C01. Remember, right? your prefixes, please remember. Now, right? You may even forget your girlfriend's name, but you should not forget your prefixes, basically. So I am in A01. Vishnu will be in B01 and then Praveen will be in C01. Clear? So whatever I create on A01 will be creating on B01 and then respectively C B01 and C01. Actually. <coughs> Is it clear? So that okay, yeah. for trading purposes, we can have our own set of master and child. Any doubts on this now? No, we are <laughs> so with this intro, we are going to jump into the system. <laughs> we'll jump into the system. So I will have one master and then two child to begin with. I'll have one master and two child to begin with. So one master and two child. So we are going to begin our activity on the system directly. So to before we create the inventory org, we have to have the location ready. So we are going to create the locations first. The location is the first activity you are going to create. All right now. So now I will now go to the what's called your group now. Right? In the Nana's password and group, as and when I get the instances, I will be pasting it over here. Now, when let us say I am not going to work on EDU, fine right? EDU. So uh, uh, it has got plenty of users actually. Fine. If you there is a pinned message in the top, if you click on it, it will not show you how many users is there. Fine right? for financial users, it is a phase zero one up to a phase forty, and then for the procurement, they have PRC zero one up to PRC forty, and then for the supply chain, whatever the SCM zero one up to SCM forty. So this many users are available on PPM project portfolio management. So many ready made users are there. For all the users, what happens? The password is same actually. Yes. If you go there, click on it. If you go there, if you go down and then see, the passwords are going to be same actually. In some cases, what happens? I will be giving you, for example, dev twenty nine. I will not give you the username also, but this user only will work. Fine. Other users, this password will not. If you have not given any user in the middle, what happens? It is a common for all the users actually. Are you all clear now? Any doubts? Yes. Now, okay, fine. One more thing. Now, what happens? Uh, many people now, since I am now giving SCM10, uh, so many people would have modified the password actually <coughs> on any instance, whatever. So I will now use SCM20 for my training. <coughs> so Vishnu will use the SCM21, and then Praveen will now use SCM22. <coughs> Got it now? <laughs> so I will now use SCM10 dot student. So Vishnu will now use SCM21 dot student, and then Praveen will use SCM22 dot student. Normally, those things will not be touched by others, actually. And then the password is same. Clear? Okay, sure. Fine. Mm -hmm. So we're going to begin with this. So let us know what happens. I will now go there, right click, and then copy the link, actually. So you go to this place, and then as and when I give it, fine, go there. Now, I'm now going to create the common ones now, fine. So whenever this goes away on a new instance, what happens? These common activities can be done within 10 minutes. If you are fast, you can do it in 10 minutes. Now we are going to begin the common activity. We are going to begin the common activity. So we are going to begin the common day. So go there. So now minimize it. I will, not, I will take a copy of it now. Minimize it. I will now go to uh, the one of I will now paste this. I will now paste it. Now I am not going to have a user now. Fine. You tell me what is my username now? 
my username or praveen can you tell me your username now i have already forgotten 22 yeah. yes praveen is 22 right? vishnu is 21 actually so i am mm -hmm. i am 20 actually i am 20 vishnu is 21 and then praveen is 22 are you clear on this now yeah yes uh -huh. i will not go there i will not put what your cm20 dot student and then i'm not putting it so i will not go and then take a copy of the password and then log in no bother i will not take a copy of the password i don't take copy of the password and then i will not put it and then i will not sign in so vishnu will not sign in 21 student you will not do 22 student the same password the passwords are common for all these hundreds of users actually Hmm. Right. But somebody who might have what happens is changed. Normally, nobody will come to 20 and 21. So that is why what happens, we are using this. When everybody will be using 10 or 0, 1, 0, 2, and all, they will not change the passwords. But 20 and all, nobody will normally come. Right. So click on sign in. I'm not signing. So once when I sign in, I'll be going inside. <clears throat> so now onwards, I'm not going to teach you about what you have to create on every instance commonly, actually. Okay. What you are going to create. So the first activity which I have to create is what location. I have to create one master location, and then what happens? Only one child location to begin with. Right? One master and one child only I will now get. Later on, the second child when it comes will now create. So I will now create two locations. Right? I know what location I am going to create. So I have now reached this page now. Fine. This is this page. Fine. If you click on the home icon on the top now, fine. This is known as a springboard. If you click on the home icon on the top, we are now into the springboard actually. This is a springboard. So now what happens? On the right hand side, I go there, click on the name now. Fine. My, my click on this. My name will be there. Find the short one. My SEM20 is known as the SS actually. And click on it. And then from that, what happens? I click on the setup and maintenance. Actually. So click on it and then I go to the setup and maintenance. So once when you click on the setup and maintenance, we land up at the area called functional setup manager. This area is known as a functional setup manager. We land up on this. So on the right hand side, we have a task list. Fine. Click on the task list and then go to search. Once when you give a search, what happens? We come to the what happens? The specific area of task execution. Actually. <laughs> so the task name is what? Manage locations. I will not write manage percentage point. Locations percentage. Manage locations. You click on the manage locations. Fine. Click on the manage locations. You click on the manage locations. This is the task name. Fine. I am now going to create my location. And then whenever you are working on what happens? This system is basically US based. And so it works very well with US. Actually. So do not change the country at all. Whatever locations or whatever org you're creating it, whatever they keep it in the United States because it has been fully fine-tuned for US actually. So I'm not going to get one master location and then one child location. So click on the create button. I'm not going to create. I click on create. I'm not clicking on the create button. I will not click on the create button. <coughs> Go there. And then we are now going to create a location actually. So my convention is what zero to locations master because we are not going to perform any transaction on the master and then one and two are child actually go there so i will now see leave the date as much one one fifty one fine leave it and then the location set is a common you leave it as such name i go there so my my prefix is what uh i have not taken what yes uh, 20 now fine i will not say uh, i am the trainer actually and i will not say t20 so you're all students so you'll be having what yes 21 and yes 22. <coughs> so Decide your prefix basically. Right? So I am a trainer, so T20, and then Vishnu is T21. <laughs> Praveen will be T22. Clear on the naming. <clears throat> Can you say yes to me that you understood? Yes. Right? So T20, S21, and then S22 are the three prefixes which you are going to use. So shift underscore, fine. I will also say lock underscore zero. For me, what happens is zero to location means what? It is mainly meant only for the master, or, and then we will not perform any transactions in the master. Or. Take a copy of it, put in the code now, paste it, and then put in the description. Go down. Country, don't make a change. In the zip code, what happens? If you know the US zip codes, you can put it. I will now put a New York City zip code, fine, 10020. If you know you, you are very well aware of the geography of US, fine, you can put your zip code. And you that. I'm putting it. So I'm now using Manhattan. It now gives you two choices. I will now choose this, fine, click on OK. So once when it chooses the zip code, what happens? The state, the city, and county are coming. They are all mandatory fields, actually. The state, city. So you choose a zip code and then give a tap and then choose one of them. The state, city, and county will be populated automatically. And then I will now go to the address line. I will now say if the T20 is the one, fine. Go to the underscore T20, whatever space, and then 
address space zero. This is zero to zero to address right. P20 space address address space zero. So I complete the address, and then there are plenty of details below that will be used by the HCMT, human capital management, will be using the extra information basically. Fine. And they'll be having a lot of information to be pulled up. Whereas it is not required for a supply chain team, actually. And don't worry about it. So this much is only has to be created for a location, actually. Is it clear? Can you say yes to me? Give a name code and description, and then the zip code, whatever the, you put it, and then give a tab, and then ensure that your state, city, and county are populated, and then give an address now. Right. Now, my zeroth address means what? This is for the zeroth org, actually. Can you say yes to me? Yes. Yeah. Good. I will now go to the submit button. So whenever you have a submit button on the top, you have to submit it. Thank you for submitting now. I'm now submitting it. So the location creation is now submitted. Fine. It will be created. It, a concurrent program will be running on the back end and then it will be creating the location. Thank you. So once when it is created, what happens? I can even query this. Click on S no fine. Warning message is coming. Do you want to continue? The request will be submitted for creation. The request was submitted. Thank you. Okay. It's now getting created. I go there. I will now put my T20. You will be putting S20 and then S21. Fine. Click on search now. Fine. Once when you search for it, you will now find the location coming on the board. <coughs> so I will now create only one more child now. Fine. Afterwards, I will now create the second child later on. For the second child one, I will now create the location. So click on create now. Fine. Child one, I'm going to create. <coughs> so click on it. I will not get a location for the child one. So go there. So the name is what? T20. If I underscore, what happens? I will not say lock underscore one right, for the first location. I'm going to take off it and put the code now. And then put the description. Then go there. I will not put the same code. I'm go there. I will not choose the one now. Fine. Click on OK. Then go down. Then address what happens? T20. Fine. Everywhere you have to prefix your code now. Fine. My Mr. 20 will be S20 and then S21 and then S22. Address 1. I am not putting it as address 1. Got enough time for that. So click on submit by which what happens? My child location is also created. But where in this application, Anna, are you saying this master, I mean, this child location is we under this? We are ready to come to that. We are now okay. only what happens? I created the locations. So we okay. have created one location for the master and then we created one location for the child. Now, what happens? We are now going to create our master org and then the child org also. Fine. The master and child org we are going to create. While creating it, we are going to associate the location. Okay. Clear. Location yeah. creation is now clear. Any doubts? I click on okay now. Is it difficult? Is it easy? The entire ERP is easy. Only thing is what? It is very huge now. <laughs> that is the only problem. Okay. Sure. Not complete. So at this stage, shall we go for a break? So that whatever we'll now go for the next topic. Yeah, sure. So okay, fine. I will not stop the sharing now. Fine. Mm. So have you got an idea about uh, the ERP now? Mm. How it's functioning and all? The whole ERP is what happens it is not at all difficult, but it is very vast actually. So much of the things are there. And then I will now gradually step up my speed of what happens the delivery. So that what happens, you'll understand about how <clears throat> how much of things are there. Remembering is very difficult, but once when you start to practice, everything will come into your mind, actually. Mm -hmm. So you can remain here now, fine. I will now make you the co-host also. So that what happens, you can remain here. And then I will now go for a cup of coffee and then come back, fine. So I will now leave, but you will not be leaving, okay? Fine, you can go for a coffee. So it is a 3.35, so uh, 4.35, 4.45 p.m. India will now begin the next session. Okay. I'll not go sure. back in 10 minutes. I'll be back. He can remain here. Sure. I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Time. Okay. Sure. sure. Thank you.